This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The UEFA Champions League final is coming up on Saturday between Man City and Inter. We're going to break down that match for today, let you know where you can find value in the betting markets over at FanDuel Sportsbook by talking to Austin Cass, getting his read on that game. Then we'll talk some baseball later on for tonight. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, joined here as mentioned by Austin Cass. You can check him out on Twitter at Austin Cass and find his work over at numberfire.com. And Austin, EPL season is wrapped up. The UCL about to be wrapped up. So what are you going to do with <laughs> soccer in kind of like a downtime until the Women's World Cup picks up? Yeah, thank- thankfully we've got the Women's uh, World Cup. But yeah, this is going to be the first break for men's soccer really in a couple years with COVID and the schedule being jammed up and then the World Cup and yeah, it's it's going to be a sad summer at the Cass household. Absolutely. Well, hopefully we can get a World Cup championship in there to kind of fill that void, pick up the excitement once again. Uh, but the final one on the men's side coming up this Saturday between Man City and Inter. We'll break down that full game with Austin, get his read on his favorite bets at FanDuel Sportsbook. Then I'll talk some baseball later on in the show for Wednesday night. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed because on yesterday's show, we broke down game number three in the NBA Finals between the Heat and the Nuggets by talking to Brandon Gadula. Also talked to him about the RBC Canadian Open, breaking down his thoughts on this week's field and Sarah bets over at FanDuel Sportsbook. So uh, both those options still live. Uh, you can bet them still over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Check out that show by subscribing to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And also check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page. Coming up later on this week, we'll be talking some NASCAR and Sonoma, some more baseball thoughts coming up. We'll talk some more hockey, talk some more basketball, and of course, uh, strikeout props with Pitching Ninja back with us on Friday. And also the Belmont Stakes. Uh, we'll have Christina Blacker on again on Friday as well. All right here in the Covering the Spread podcast feed but for right now Austin let's turn our focus to this UEFA Champions League final between Man City and Inter and right now looking at the markets we got Man City at minus 220 on the money line that is for 90 minutes plus stoppage time and Man City was able to wrap up the EPL and now trying to go for the double crown but the market pretty high on Man City in this game so do you believe the gap between Man City and Inter is as big as the markets imply here no, I don't. Um, and it's actually, City's actually going for a treble because they won the FA Cup last weekend. Oh, man. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, I do think City are the best team in the world. I think they kind of have been for the past few seasons. And that's backed up by their expected goal differential per 90 minutes of uh, plus 1.23, which is tops among Europe's big five leagues per FB reps expected goal model. Uh, they're awesome. I've been super impressed with them. The second half of the season, they've shown an ability to win in different ways. They don't always have to play a beautiful uh, soccer to win, which that hasn't always been the case for them. But I think Inter are pretty good too. Uh, their XG differential per 90 is uh, plus 0.83, which is seventh across Europe, Europe's big five leagues. And uh, Serie A is generally viewed as a slightly worse league than uh, the Premier League. But both of the leagues have three teams in the top 13 of XG differential across Europe's big five leagues. So I think Serie A might be just a little undervalued overall. Uh, Inter finished Serie A with an XG differential that was nearly as good as Napoli's. And if this was Napoli in the final, I don't think the gap, I don't think the odds would be what they are here. And over two matches with Barcelona in the group stage of the Champions League, Inter notched a win and a tie, and Barca finished the season with the second best XG differential across Europe's big five leagues. So Inter's shown that they can play with the big boys. And uh, yeah, I don't think the gap's quite as big as what the odds are showing. So right now, uh, the time market is plus 360 again for 90 minutes plus stoppage time. The inter money line is plus 550 in that span. So if you think that the gap between Man City and Inter is smaller than the markets imply, what to you is the best route for exploiting that in the traditional markets? So I am interested in taking Inter to tie after 90 minutes plus stoppage time. But I also like the... Uh, 
correct score market. I think that's what I'm going to do. And that's my preference because it allows me to bet on city to win, which I think is what's going to happen, but also maybe take advantage of inter being undervalued. So the shortest odds lie with city to win one Oh and two Oh. Uh, those are both priced at plus 600, but I like taking City to win 2-1 or the match to tie 1-1, which are plus 700 and plus 800, respectively. Um, this match is pretty much a free hit for Inter. No one's really given them much of a chance. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is a chance for City to get a historic treble only that's only been done once uh, by one other English team. It's kind of a coronation for them. It feels like the stars have really aligned just considering what finals typically look like. It's a somewhat easy matchup for them. At least that's what the narrative is. It's a chance for their manager, Pep Guardiola to finally win the champions league post Barcelona, which to get that monkey off of his back. Um, so really this, it seems like all the stars are lined up for man city, which means enter can be super free they're not really supposed to be here there's no way they thought this would be where they were would be before the end of the season so you're talking about the fact that you could be off in this market and i think that's important to acknowledge but i think the one thing that this does by taking kind of a longer shot on the uh one one tie at eight to one or the two to one win uh at seven to one you're kind of allowing yourself more upside should that be right so you're taking a bigger risk, which implies more volatility and volatility in your case is not a bad thing. So I do like that approach. And I think that what I was going to ask you initially is going to go to the double chance market and check out um, enter and draw plus 165. But I think that you kind of answered my question for me. I was going to ask, you know, any thought for you towards taking enter and draw plus 165 instead of these. But I think that by talking about the fact that you could be way off, you're getting a better price on those numbers to compensate for that possibility i think that you know you kind of answer my question by saying that you wanted to take that route so was that the thought process for you and giving yourself more upside to account for the fact that you may be off here yeah for sure i feel like i'm you know sort of swinging for the fence a little bit yeah. so if i'm gonna swing for the fence then i'd like to get a payout that right. uh, reflects that i'm swinging for the fence instead of just blooping a single over the shortstop's head <laughs> So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with, you know, more than doubling your money at plus 165, right. obviously. But yeah, I want to I want to swing for the fence and and see if I can nail it on the one one or two one. OK, so the one one market again, eight to one and the two to one win for Man City is seven to one. Now, what about player props? Anything stand out to you for those in this match? So a lot of these are priced as if Inter is not going to score. So this okay. kind of correlates with. Uh, the whole theme I've been talking about all along. I like both Lautaro Martinez and Nicolo Berea to score or assist. Um, Martinez is plus 240 to score or assist. His, uh, this recommendation is a little bit contingent on Romelu Lukaku not starting. If Lukaku starts, he'll probably be on penalties. If Lukaku doesn't start, Martinez will be on penalties. And I'd like Martinez to be on penalties when I place this bet. Uh, he tallied 27 goals plus assists and 28, uh, 27 Serie A starts. No other Inter expected starter had more than six goals. So he's their clear focal point, and I don't think Lukaku will start. So I like that one. And then also Berea is plus 430. He's a real key creative piece for them. Uh, he finished Serie A with 12 goals plus assists and 31 starts. He scored two goals over his past four Champions League matches with nine shot-creating actions in that span. If Inter are chasing the game late and get some extended possession against City, I think he's someone who is capable of making magic happen and creating a chance for them out of nothing. So I like both of those guys to score or assist. Uh, Nikilo Barea, as you mentioned, plus 430 to score or assist. And uh, the Martinez one uh, was plus 240. Are you holding off the Martinez one until you get the official lineup to account for the Lukaku possibility there? Yeah, I'm going to wait just, just in case because to me... I'm, he's a lot less uh, enticing if Lukaku plays and he doesn't get uh, right. the penalty. So, yeah. One of the risks with that is if Lukaku um, does not wind up in the lineup, we could see the Martinez number shorten. How how short are you willing to go if we assume this market does shorten with Lukaku out of the starting lineup? Would plus 200 be too short for you to score or assist on Martinez? Or where's kind of the breaking point for you? I would say the plus 210 plus... Okay. 220 range probably for me, but 
Lukaku, um, I think he's a long shot to start, and I think sure. this is pretty much priced as if he is not starting. And plus, okay. for the book, there's no real punishment for them to put it here in case he does start, you know? So, right. Uh, yeah, so I, I would say I'd go as low as like plus 220, I think. Okay, so check out the Martinez to score or assist mark, depending on if Lukaku does or does not go. Plus 210, plus 220, where Austin's looking for that one. Nicola Barea to score or assist at plus 430. And then again, the uh, the correct score mark, it's tie 1-1 one, one at 8-1, and Man City 2-1 to one at 7-1. to one. Giving yourself a lot of upside here, Austin, which I like. Uh, to have some fun for your final men's match for quite some time. That is Austin Cass. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at Austin Cass. Find his work over at Number Fire dot com austin it has been a pleasure to talk to you throughout this soccer season looking forward to talking to you once again next year or as other stuff pops up along the way good luck on saturday enjoy the match we'll talk to you again soon sounds good thanks for having me on i've appreciated it i've enjoyed it too absolutely all right again check out austin on twitter at austin cast i'm looking forward to uh some more soccer discussion coming up uh next fall once things resume hopefully getting someone to talk on to talk uh the women's world cup as well we'll dive into some baseball here in just a bit but first it's almost time to crown a new nba champion and FanDuel wants you to be part of the excitement because right now new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to two thousand five hundred dollars that is two thousand five hundred dollars back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win there's no better place to bet all the finals action than America's number one sportsbook, FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's dig into some Major League Baseball for today and outline a couple money lines and a couple strikeout props that my numbers are liking for today's game. Let's start things off here with the Red Sox and the Guardians. My numbers are showing value in the, the Red Sox to win this game. Money line for them, plus 116 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And I'm pretty far off market here as I actually do have the Red Sox favored to win this game. And again, the money line is plus 116. And that could mean that I'm off. That's always a possibility. And, you know, you always want to account for the possibility that your model is just not correct. There's margin of errors and stuff like that. But I also understand why the model is here. The starting pitching matchup definitely does favor the Guardians because Tanner Bybee has looked fantastic, especially recently. He's been great his entire career in the minors, now in the majors. But especially the past six or so starts, he's been outstanding. So I get it. But Boston's offense is much better than the Guardians. and. I kind of feel like that's going a bit overlooked here. The Red Sox active roster has a 103 WRC plus against righties. The Guardians are at 80, so really bad offense for them this year. Cutter Crawford starting for the Red Sox. I wouldn't expect him to be a full go here, probably around 60 or so pitches before he gives way to that bullpen. That's fine for me. Crawford has pitched well, um, whether it's been in long relief or as a starter earlier on this year. So, I've got faith in him. I've got faith in this Red Sox offense. I do not have faith in the Guardians offense. So plus 116 to me, a very good number to get the Red Sox money line for tonight. I will take that. So the first bet, the Red Sox money line at plus 116. Second that I like for tonight is actually one in uh, what was the thriller of last night. That was the Dodgers and the Reds. And right now the Reds money line is plus 142. And I like it. I'm going to take it. Because I understand if you want to be skeptical of Brandon Williamson, who will start here for the Reds, because did not have the best numbers in AAA, start in the majors, 
I think has been a bit worse than the results led on. So his ERA is 4.29, his skill interactive ERA, his expected ERA, both much worse than that. And I'm not super high on him personally, but also not super high on Noah Syndergaard on the opposing side. Syndergaard has struggled all year long. Uh, and he's been tinkering, as most pitchers do, trying to correct that. He's been using fewer curveballs his past six starts. And, you know, we can look into those starts. That's his most relevant sample and see if it's improved. But his skill interactive ERA has actually gotten worse. It's 4.98 in that stretch. So the adjustments Syndergaard has made have not paid on, off as of yet. That's one aspect. The second aspect is when runners get on base, they are running with reckless abandon against Syndergaard. He has led up 16 stolen bases this year. The Dodgers have a team, as a team have led up more stolen bases than any team in baseball. And the Reds are a team that is very willing to run, especially now that Ellie De La Cruz is up with the big league, the big league team. So I think the Dodgers should be favored here because Williamson is not a guy I have a lot of faith in. Their ISO against lefties is otherworldly. So they should be favored. But the Reds implied win odds are 41%. There are going to be a lot of runs in this game. The total is 11 for a reason. This game was chaotic last night. I think the Reds offense, a bit underrated. I think they could do some damage with their legs. Against Syndergaard for tonight, I think they're a value relative to the market. So as always, account for the fact that this, this bet, based on what the market is saying, has just 41% odds of cashing. But I think that the odds the Reds actually win are higher than that. So to me, the Reds money line plus 142, the Red Sox money line plus 116, the two money lines I like for tonight. As far as strikeout props, I want to start things off with one that is primarily based on pitch count. Actually, the other one is two. But let's start things off here by talking about Jameson Tyone. Uh, his strikeout prop right now at FanDuel Sportsbook under four and a half is minus 106. There's been some action towards the over, so that has shifted here. I think... Despite that, it's never fun to bet against the market, but I do think the under is the right way to go here. It's minus 106 right now. This has moved against me from where I took it earlier on this morning, but do still think there is value in the under. And primarily, the reason I want the under here is pitch count because Tyone hasn't gone longer than 80 pitches since he came off the IL. And that's a six-start sample now, so a pretty large sample. They have not been letting him go deep in games. Now, part of that's because of effectiveness, and that could be fluky, but also even the game's... He's been good. He hasn't been going super deep. Uh, the ERA for Tyone, 8.61. Angels, roughly average in the strikeout department. So I've got Tyone projected for 3.7 strikeouts tonight. He's had strikeout totals uh, on the road in three starts in the sample of three, one, and one. So it is concerning. The market has moved against me here uh, as it has. There has been some action on the over for Tyone, but. I do still think the under is the right way to go. So I'll take Jameson Tyone under four and a half strikeouts minus 106. I think in order to talk myself into an over here, I would need to get assurance that the pitch count for Tyone will increase. And I have not seen anything to make me believe that will happen. So I'll take Tyone under four and a half strikeouts minus 106. I would note that, again, there is money going against that bet. But, you know, there are reasons I feel differently personally. The second one is going to be an over. That is for Chris Bassett. I'm going to check out where his number is right now. Uh, over four and a half strikeouts is minus 138 at FanDuel. This one has been going the direction I thought it would. I do still think there is value in the over, but as always, make sure you shop around. Find what number you can get because at least as of earlier on this morning, you could get Bassett uh, over four and a half at minus 120. So check around there. Even at minus 138, I think it is a good enough bet to take. The reason I like Bassett and would be okay taking it even at minus 138, despite that being closer to the tipping point, is that Bassett will go deep in games. He often gets over 100 pitches. He rarely is under 94. And Bassett is a guy I was betting against earlier on this year, taking unders, considering sacking against him in daily fantasy. But seems like he has corrected course. He's had seven starts with fewer curveballs. And his strikeout rate in that time is 24.2%. That's allowed him to hit the over on this number in four out of five, uh, in six out of seven starts in this span, despite having four out of seven starts on the road. He's at home here and facing the Astros, not a high strikeout matchup by any means, but also not as low of a strikeout matchup as it has been in years past. If you look at the starts that Bast has made at home in this stretch, his strikeout totals at home are seven, eight, and seven, so well above uh, that mark. And that's been against, I believe, the Mariners, Yankees, and I believe the Braves were the third team in there. So three pretty tough teams. So the Astros 
I think with their current health are tough as well, but Bassett has shown he can rise to that test. I'd be willing to check out alternate markets here on Bassett just to kind of see maybe we want to go for a higher upside one, uh, six plus strikeouts plus 154. That's semi enticing too. So check out the over four and a half. If you can get the minus 120, I would probably take that, but Minus 138, I'm still willing to take it. I would consider uh, six plus strikeouts at plus 154 because I haven't projected at six. So, you know, or six point something, I believe, for tonight. I'd at least consider it. But to me, I'm going to officially go with over four and a half. Uh, check around if you can get minus 120. Even at minus 138 is still fine. But overall, Bassett and Tyone, uh, the two strikeout props, Bassett over four and a half at minus 138. Tyone under four and a half strikeouts, minus 106. And then the two money lines, the Reds plus 142 and the Red Sox plus 116. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Back with you once again tomorrow, talking some NBA and some NHL. Uh, and then on Friday, Double Dip. We'll be talking some MLB uh, with Pitching Ninja, Rob Friedman, and then talking the Belmont Stakes later on. So three more shows still to come for this week. Again, if you want some thoughts on NBA Finals Game 3, check out yesterday's show with Brandon Gadula talking about that and the RBC Canadian Open. Thank you once again to Austin Cass for swinging by, breaking down his thoughts on the use CL final between Man City and Inter. Check out Austin on Twitter at Austin Cass and check out his work over at numberfire.com. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. Enjoy game three of the finals for tonight. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 